life of Toby is a miserable life and he wants to keep his misery out of his mind by indulging in these continuous funny things that he plans. And that is why it is very necessary for him to go on drinking, to go on believing that it's a festival. Hi everyone, welcome back to Nibble Pop. We are doing this thorough textual reading and analysis of William Shakespeare's play Twelfth Night. We have already completed many scenes from this play and today in this video we are going to look at the second scene from Act 3. Here we will mostly come across characters from the subplot namely uh, Toby, Fabian and of course Andrew Agrochi and there is Maria at the end. Although you might feel that this is a comparatively less important scene, but this scene will help establish aspects of this play which will be very important if you are trying to write answers on the mood of festivity and especially the characters which appear in the subplot. And if you are wondering what this guy is doing right beside me, I will let you know very shortly. So don't skip anything in this scene, it's going to be a very short scene. So we will quickly go over the whole scene, uh, get some explanations across to you. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so, so that you get notified every time a new video comes up. This is Monami Mukherjee, welcome once again. Now as scene 2 begins, uh, we are still at Olivia's place earlier also in the previous scene. Uh, we have been there and there was this interaction between Olivia and Viola, very emotionally charged interaction. And it happens in Shakespeare that after he gives you an emotionally charged scene, he usually allows you to relax through a scene where uh, in case of comedies, you have uh, lot of humor and at the same time you don't have to and at the same time you don't have to worry about serious things okay so he brings you back to a mode where your senses relax and you are prepared to reach the next high when the next emotional scene comes all right so this is going to be a comparatively of course very very less emotional scene it's more like uh, bantering and uh, you know humor for the masses and Shakespeare was very particular because he knew that his audience uh, you know it was not just about high class people his audience constituted um, all kinds of people from all kinds of uh, backgrounds so he wanted to make sure that all kinds of audience get some entertainment from his play and this is specifically uh, targeted at those audience uh, or members of those audience who do not appreciate very high poetry but rather uh, come to watch a play just to relax and laugh about it okay so here we have sir toby sir andrew and fabian entering the stage andrew is visibly very upset and we'll get to know why no faith. I'll not stay a jot longer. I'm not going to stay here. Mm, no, not anymore. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. What's your problem? And Fabian also, he also adds, you must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. So tell us why you want to leave. Mary, I saw your niece do more favours to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. So earlier when Olivia and Viola, they had their conversation in the garden, um, uh, Toby and Andrew, they understood the whole thing and maybe Andrew uh, caught a glimpse of what was going on between them. He could see the expression uh, on uh, Olivia's face and he visibly has become very jealous. So he's saying that I have seen that your niece Olivia, she is uh, showing so much favor to this young man who is coming from the count and she has never shown any favor to me. So why should I stay? 
I saw it in the orchard. So I just saw back there in the garden. Now, so Toby, he wants to keep Andrew with him. Why? Because Andrew is clearly sponsoring his drinking spells. And so he doesn't want Andrew to leave. And he wants to justify this whole thing and tries to establish that Olivia is actually interested in Andrew. And how does he do that? He says, did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. So while you were looking at them, talking in the garden, was Olivia aware that you were watching? As plain as I see you now, yes, she saw that I was watching. Then Fabian comes in. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. This proves that she loves you. Slight. Will you make an ass of me? So what do you think of me? I'm, I'm so stupid. You will just say anything. How can you even explain yourself? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. So Fabian is all formal. Okay, he's saying that I'm going to prove to you that Olivia is in love with you. And Toby adds, and they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. So judgment and reason, they're supposed to be, you know, this uh, epitome of virtue and fairness. So yes, it can be proven. Now Fabian is giving his reason. She did show favor to the youth in your sight. So she was showing affection towards this messenger while you were watching. Only to exasperate you, only to make you jealous, okay, to arouse some kind of reaction in you. To awake your dormouse valor, valor means bravery, you know, might. So your might, your bravery, your courage that is lying asleep like a dormouse, okay, dormouse, timid expression. And Olivia wants you to react. She wants you to shake off your, uh, this, your silence, your, your lack of valor, okay. to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. Now liver, as we have always seen, liver is considered to be a site of passion. So somehow Olivia had done whatever she has done to excite Andrew, to make him more passionate, more forward. You should then have accosted her in a cast. Remember the meaning of a cast, which uh, Toby had explained to Andrew. Anyway, a cast means go and approach someone in an aggressive way. So you should have gone and approached her in an aggressive way, addressed her, and with some excellent jests, fire new from the mint. You should have banged the youth into dumbness. You should have gone there. You should have talked in a very jovial way. And you should have turned that other man into a dumb person. So this was a chance which you have lost, which Olivia wanted you to, to act on. This was looked for at your hand. And this was bought. The double guilt of this opportunity you let time wash off. So you were provided with an opportunity to go and declare yourself to, to get a better impression on Olivia and you missed that chance. The chance was ball. So the double guilt of this opportunity, the guilt here means when uh, things are guilted with gold. Okay, so they are added a shine. So this opportunity was a shining thing for him which he had lost. And this was Bok, the double guilt of this opportunity. You let time wash off. So time washed off this guilt. Guilt means this added shine to your opportunity. And you are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion. Now north of somebody's opinion here means to reach to a cold state. So north is supposed to be a cold place and uh, if he is in the north of Olivia's opinion then that means that Olivia is cold about Andrew now because he has missed the opportunity. Another reference which is very interesting is you will find this in some of the very good uh, notes uh, which we see in case of books like Arden edition. This is a reference to the Dutchman William Berens who went on 
uh, on this Arctic expedition. And uh, this expedition was uh, very much uh, in discussion those days. So, this reference, uh, well, it might be a pointer to that. Anyway, so the point is Fabian is saying that you have lost an opportunity and now Olivia is cold towards you. You are like in her north pole now where you will hang like an icicle on a Dutchman's beard. See the reference to uh, this man Barenz is very clear because there is this use of the word Dutchman. So definitely Shakespeare had this reference in his mind. So you will be like that Dutchman hanging in a nowhere place and well very cold. Unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, you should do something about it. And what are the things you have to do now? Either of valor or policy. So, if you have read Paradise Laws, there was this line where, uh, well, um, Satan was saying that by fraud or by direct confrontation. Okay. So, if you have to win a war, you can go and directly hit the opponent or you can use tactics, policy. So here Fabian is putting forward these two uh, things saying that these are the two options you have. And uh, well, let's look at Andrew's reaction to it. And it be anyway, it must be with valor for policy. I hate, well, Andrew says that he doesn't like to, uh, you know, make use of policy tactics well we know why because andrew doesn't have the gray matter required of someone to make any kind of tactical move but he just says that i don't believe in policy i simply believe in valor because i am a brave man i had as lief be a brownist as a politician. Now, Robert Brown, he uh, was the founder of the independence and this is again a reference to the point that uh, Andrew is against the Puritans. Okay, so he is saying that uh, I am not a Puritan politician kind of a person. I would rather be valorous and brave. Okay, Toby jumps in. Why then? Build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Okay, then that should be your course of action. You should do something brave right now. Challenge me, the Count's youth, to fight. Now, Toby wants Andrew to challenge Cesario into a duel. With him, hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it. My niece will get to know about it and she'll be so impressed that you are such a brave man. And assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. So this is again a very patriarchal way of looking at things that women are always impressed when men uh, come with a lot of strength and show a lot of valor uh, even if that means they hit uh, your favorite person black and blue. Uh, so here Toby is clearly misguiding Andrew. He's, he is telling that you go and hit Cesario, uh, attack him in a duel and uh, Olivia will come to know that you have won the duel and she will be so impressed because she is a woman after all. Fabian adds fuel to the fire. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Now, this is uh, the protocol or procedure that when a knight uh, challenges someone, uh, there should be a messenger taking the challenge to that person. So, he is saying that will you take my challenge to him? I will write something down. You take it's like an official invitation to a duel. Go! Write it in a martial hand. So, with your warlike hand, you go and write a letter. Be cursed and brief. Cursed here means sharp. Don't yeah, hang about here and there. Just be direct. It is no matter how witty. So, it be eloquent and full of invention. So, you have to write in a very powerful way. Taunt him with the license of ink. So go on provoking him so that he gets to uh, agree to fight with you. If thou thouest him some thrice, so in your letter you should use the expression thou at least three times. If thou thouest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss. And 
as many lies as will lie in thy sheet of paper go on lying doesn't matter although the sheet were big enough for the bed of wear in england set them down go on writing and writing and writing go about it let there be gall enough in thy ink poison bitterness okay so let your ink be full of bitterness though thou write with a goose pen so you are writing with the goose pen but it should look like you are writing in flames okay no matter about it so go just just start writing right now where shall i find you so okay i'll write this letter but where shall i find you who will call thee at thy cubic low go so i I'll, I'll just come and meet you so andrew leaves now fabian and toby they talk about andrew after andrew leaves this is a dear mannequin to you sir toby so mannequin is like those puppets which you find in shopping malls and uh, garment stores where uh, you know they they wear the the different kinds of dresses uh, which you can see as on display so here andrew is like a mannequin he's like a puppet who is controlled by toby and this fabian observes this is a dear mannequin to you sir toby i have been dear to him now here dear in the first sentence which fabian uses here dear means very close very intimate okay in the next sentence where toby uses the word dear dear means expensive i have been dear to him i have been costly to him why because because of me andrew had lost a lot of money how much money some 2000 strong or so 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 it's a great deal of money which andrew has lost because of toby or rather invested in toby to get olivia and therefore toby is very expensive for him we shall have a rare letter from him mm, he's going to write a letter i know but you will not deliver it so you're not going to give that letter to that this messenger never trust me then and by all means stir on the youth to an answer i am going to deliver the letter and i am going to provoke that youth so that he gives an answer i think oxen and wain ropes cannot hail them together for andrew if he were opened and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea which means that in andrew's liver there is no blood which means andrew has no guts he doesn't have any kind of might valor in him because liver is supposed to be the place where valor is stored well not according to modern biologists according to old belief so this is what toby is referring to that i don't think andrew is going to fight at all because he is a real loser i eat the rest of the anatomy so he if he has even an ounce of bravery i am going to simply eat him up okay so that means it's an impossibility and is opposite the youth bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty so on the other hand even that messenger doesn't look like a cruel person so there's no way there will be an actual fight but we can always pass on this message uh, create an answer out of him so that will be fun for us so you realize one thing that uh, these people fabian toby they don't intend to actually harm anybody you know who is well if you are andrew aguchi the whole world will make fool of you that is your problem but otherwise they want to play safe they only want to do things where people will not get hurt in a way according to them and so they think that this is going to be our next sport so they are not yet finished with malvolio's uh, episode that is still continuing and they are trying to build another kind of entertainment so these people they don't have much work to do and they live their lives without any care without any real serious worries and this somehow looks like the whole symbol of uh, partying and entertainment 
Now, partying and entertainment is a very good thing. It relaxes you. But if it becomes the only thing that you do, will then your life be worthwhile? Will you really enjoy those things if you do that every day? I don't think so. So, somehow we feel that uh, life of Toby is a miserable life and he wants to keep his misery out of his mind by indulging in these continuous funny things that he plans and that is why it is very necessary for him to go on drinking to go on believing that it's a festival because otherwise it's total misery there is no hope for him okay maria comes in look where the youngest wren of nine comes now when a wren lays eggs and the ninth egg is hatched it's a tiny one and we always have reference to maria's short stature and uh, these uh, expressions are expressions of love of course so toby calls her the youngest wren of nine uh, you can do it as an exercise things that toby calls maria by you know first he calls him the indian gold and then this one so big do this exercise for yourself just list down the things which uh, toby uh, calls maria by and then you will understand uh, the kind of uh, cordiality that toby shares with her and you would be surprised to see that the choice of words that Toby uses uh, also shows um, a disregard of conventional way of addressing your beloved. He is not calling her a rose, he is not calling her anything that poets call their mistresses. He is calling her by names which uh, have value which have strange connotations and that makes him so different too. Perhaps that makes him more genuine than uh, you know what Orsino addresses Olivia by. Okay. All right. If you desire the spleen, now after liver we have spleen. Spleen is laughter. Okay. So if you desire the spleen, if you want to get into a fit of laughter, and will laugh yourselves into stitches that you will laugh so much that uh, your, your tummy will simply tear apart and you will need stitches. Follow me, yon gull Malvolio, that fool Malvolio is turned heathen which means that he is not a Puritan anymore, he is not wearing Puritan dresses, he is not behaving like a Puritan and Therefore, he is a non-Christian right now, which means he is a heathen, a very renegado. So, he is almost like apostate. For there is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He is behaving in such a gross way. No Christian would do that. He is in yellow stockings. And cross guarded Toby is excited. Most villainously, like a pedant that keeps a school in the church, so like a schoolmaster, he's dressed like that. I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter. That letter bore some instructions, you remember? So he has followed all that instruction. He's smiling all the time. That I drop to betray him. He does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. Now those were the times when uh, empires were expanding and adventures were going on around the world. Especially uh, people from England, Portugal, Spain. They were sailing down the oceans and seas to reach places unimaginable before. This was the time for explorations, the beginning of the colonial expansion. And this was the time of map making, cartography. And while maps were being uh, prepared, every time a sailor came back from his voyage, gave more information about some new island found, the map would get an additional line 
okay an initial border an additional island some new places were discovered so a map was a changing thing then it wasn't a fixed thing like we have now on google earth it's all fixed there and on malvolio's face when he's smiling every time a new line is added so Maria's reference is very unique because it's unusual for a woman of her position to refer to these things, worldly things. But Maria is Maria and she's very intelligent. So he does smile his face into more lines than is in the new map with the augmentation. Augmentation means addition of the Indies. Now that Indies were discovered, then the maps were expanded. Similarly, Malvolio's face is expanded. You have not seen such a thing as it is. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him. So even I'm feeling like throwing things at him. He's looking so funny and disgusting with his smile and his stockings and his cross garters. If she do, he will smile and take it for a great favor. Because I know that if Olivia strikes him, even then that will be interpreted by Malvolio as an act of love, a declaration of love. Come, bring us, bring us where he is. And they leave the stage. So, this guy, this guy is, well, I feel that is more like Andrew. Because he's all ready to pounce on our messenger Cesario. At the same time, he's very much like Malvolio too. Well, he doesn't have a yellow stockings. He has a yellow head. Doesn't matter. This whole idea of a foolish person being on display as if uh, it was a crime to be foolish. Within a comic universe, being a foolish person is often seen as a common target. It is a better target than targeting somebody for their inability to speak properly or for their facial uh, features. Uh, that is gross humor where you make fun of people because of their disabilities, because of their shyness, their hesitation to speak, their stuttering uh, conversational style. But I don't know how much fun can you make of a stupid person? For Malvolio, it's not stupidity. He is actually being villainous because his intention is not, not very, very pristine. He has intention of rising in society at the cost of fooling Olivia that he loves her. He doesn't love Olivia. But Andrew, this guy is seriously in love with Olivia and the way Toby is constantly manipulating him. Uh, at one point we do start feeling sorry for him. So every time you think about Andrew Aguchi, you think about this guy, helpless, hopeless, yet believes that he is so full of valor. Poor dear, he can't even stand on his own most of the time. All right. so. Well, I leave you to contemplate on these things, contemplate on how we make fun of our foolish, stupid friends, thinking that we are the smartest people on, in this world. Uh, how much of that is justified? How much of that can be accommodated within the structure of society? Uh, it is okay to make fun of someone if that making fun will correct him in some way. But if that making fun will make his life miserable, is it even funny anymore? I will leave you to this and we will meet again with scene 3 when we will see Antonio speaking to his friend Sebastian and that's going to be a very short scene too. Till then, thank you for all your suggestions. Uh, I have seen a lot of you requesting me to make videos on some poems. Uh, I got a number of requests for Dr. Foster's that's my favorite play trust me but see it's like a commitment I have got into this uh, frenzy of completing Twelfth Night and I'm really sorry I cannot uh, simply interrupt this whole series I'm trying my best to upload more than one video per week so that we finish this off very quickly 
I'm really sorry. Uh, I'm not able to cater to all your demands. Uh, I love your demands. They make me feel that I'm wanted. And that is really, really uh, the real compliment that I get. Thank you all. And I'm really, again, sorry for not being able to uh, successfully deliver all your requests. But keep requesting because that will help me decide what I'm going to take up after I finish 12th night. Thank you once again. This is Monami Mukherjee signing off. Till our next video, stay happy, stay safe. Bye-bye.